nostalgia. That's probably the feeling that just assaulted your brain right now, and it can be either a very good feeling or sometimes even unsettling. I personally remember watching this show when I was a kid, and back then it was so simple. It was kids being kids with bright colors and crazy antics. However, that's really all I really could know at that time, and there was actually a rather dark side to Rugrats that I could never fathom at that age, both behind the scenes in the real world and on screen with real world horrors. Plagued with custody battles of the show itself and a self-destruction of its own image on purpose, this show really has some skeletons in its closet, so let's go ahead and air them out. Now, I must warn some of you that these theories can get really, really dark, so if you are of the faint of heart, I would recommend that you honestly not watch this video. With that being said, let's go ahead and get the ball rolling. For those of you who do not know, Rugrats was a children's show that aired in 1991 on Nickelodeon, and it aired its last episode in 1994. And now if you're kind of wondering like me how a show that predates mine or maybe even your existence would have any nostalgia to it at all, well, have no fear because they ran reruns of the show up until 2012, and they had other spin-offs in that same time frame. Now, the plot was pretty simple, but unique and all the same. The show eventually had nine protagonists, Tommy being the head, Dill being the younger brother, Chucky, Tommy's best friend, the twins, both Phil and Lil, Angelica, whom arguably is more of an antagonist, and, well, there was Susie the neighbor, Spike the goodest boy, and eventually a stepsister down the line named Kimmy, as well as a slew of parents, but I'll bring them up later as it's more relevant to focus on the children in this particular show. Okay, now that I have caught my breath, let's start off with the first and probably one of the more heartbreaking stories on the list here. On the very first episode, Tommy's first birthday, we meet Tommy's mom and dad, Dee Dee and Stu respectively. However, in this meeting you can kind of get a good idea of who these two people are as a person pretty quickly. Dee Dee is well put together and by the book quite literally, while as Stu is a little more scatterbrained but creative. This theme is reinforced throughout the series as we see Stu create wacky inventions for Tommy that never really works out, sometimes even going to great length to do these things, but this is where our theory truly begins. It is suggested that Stu is actually using this as a coping mechanism to get over some kind of trauma. However, what trauma could happen in what is depicted as an average family? I guess that was kind of a loaded question as we all have different families and come from different lives, so whatever the average family is, could be a lot of different things depending on who you ask. However, this theory suggests that Tommy was actually a stillborn, and every creation Stu makes is a way to cope with the fact that his one and only child passed away. There is much more to this theory, but I don't want to give away all the fun, so as always, links will be down below if you want to read them yourself. Speaking of parents, let's talk about Chucky's dad, Charles Finster, or... Chaz for short. What a name. However, much like Stu, I think there's a lot to be discovered about his habits. In fact, this really spreads to a lot of the parents. They typically have something about them that really stands out. Or in other words, a quirk, if you will. So Chaz actually has an interesting quirk for himself. It's called All for One and basic- wait. Oh, sorry, <laughs> wrong video. He actually is riddled with anxiety and is a little timid, and that's just who he is as a person, and there's nothing particularly wrong with that. However, it does kind of make you wonder what might be the cause. This theory suggests that the reason for his rather skittish demeanor is actually a reaction to his wife passing away. We actually know this to be true after the episode Mother's Day goes in and explains what happened to his significant other. However, taking it a step further, this also leads along the same line as Tommy and might even suggest that Chucky passed away with his mother that very same night. This is why Chucky acts drastically different and has such a bombastic color palette compared to the 
other children. Blinding red hair, royal purple glasses, neon green pants, and a shirt that's literally out of this world. He's more of a figment of an overreactive mind. Furthermore, it would even explain even more so with our next entry. Before we get into the last one, I would like to leave a quick reminder to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell for notification. It truly helps. However, I also have a question I'd like to ask after the next theory, so be sure to stick around. Angelica Pickles. She is the cousin of both Dill and Tommy Pickles and is the antagonist of the show and eventually taking on more of an anti-hero role later on. However, this sinister theory might make you think of her as something entirely new on its own. The main twist in the storyline is that, well, it's all inside Angelica's head, and it starts off like this. Chucky died a long time ago, along with his mother, again explaining why Chaz is a nervous wreck all the time. Tommy was a stillborn, explaining why Stu constantly is making toys in the basement for a child who never got the chance to live. We know these two ideas, but this goes further still. In addition, the DeVilles had an abortion, and Angelica could not figure out whether it was going to be a boy or a girl at the time, so she conjured up the twins Phil and Lil. This theory goes on to suggest that Angelica suffered from a combination of both schizophrenia and bipolar disorders. It even goes deeper into her home life, however it would explain why she listened to her doll Cynthia so much. So as someone who suffers from schizophrenia, they might tell you hearing voices and animating objects that are otherwise inanimate is not outside the realms of possibility. Breaching into the real world, eventually this leads up to Angelica's only childhood friend, Susie, who entertained her delusions because it made her happy. Eventually, Susie teamed up with Nickelodeons in the early 90s to pitch Angelica's story in the form of a show called Rugrats. Now, this theory goes on and on with detailed depictions of what goes on next, and even from a standpoint of being real or fake, whoever decided to think this up, it is an impressive feet on its own and has captivated many many people to revisit this theory consistently over the years. Since that one was particularly dark, I'm going to go ahead and post up a photo of this puppy while I pose the question I wanted to ask you earlier. Would you like me to do a deeper dive on this one? Tell me in the comments below, and also while you're down there, maybe suggest some more cartoons or video games or really anything you want me to get my hands on and explore in some of these theories. As always, know that you are loved, you are valued, and make today your best day because I look forward to hearing all of your accomplishments. Other than that, I've got nothing else to say, so bye! Bye!